today is uh, the procurement for the United Kingdom of uh, all the ships and submarines and nuclear weapons uh, in the national uh, order of battle. And I want to speak particularly about the challenges that we have in organising and deploying talented people into that programme. I want to talk about their roles in that programme and the government's roles in that programme. And then a little bit about uh, how individuals make sure that these awesome uh, assets of ours, war machines of ours, are deployed safely uh, to their genuine purpose of uh, creating uh, a secure future. So my uh, first slide is really uh, the head of a letter uh, that I receive from the permanent undersecretary of the um, of the Ministry of Defence Permanent Undersecretary when I was asked to uh, interpret that uh, when I was in uh, Russia acting as an interpreter. Apparently I translated that as everlasting typist and my uh, audience didn't really understand that the senior official of the Ministry of Defence was in front of them. This is a letter from the senior official in the Ministry of, of Defence to me appointing me as the senior responsible owner, jargon, Ministry of Defence jargon, for the individual with singular responsibility for delivering the future at deterrent submarine. And that looks like this. That's our best artist's impression uh, of what that new deterrent submarine uh, will look like. Alongside uh, that, I have responsibility for the technical condition of the six SSNs we have in service in the United Kingdom today. Beyond that, we have a further four submarines in build. We have uh, 15 uh, uh, SSNs, attack submarines, awaiting disposal. We have four SSBNs in operation today, four awaiting disposal, and four on the drawing board. Today, I have five of those submarines uh, at sea, the attack submarines at sea, and two of the ballistic missile firing submarines uh, at sea. I have a shore test reactor on the north coast of Scotland, and around 18,000 people are today engaged in this enterprise directly, with a further 12,000 people making components or supporting it in some way or another. That enterprise is a large national undertaking and represents three or four billion pounds worth of national uh, investment tax of taxpayers' money per year. This uh, small graph shows the defence budget uh, roughly stable over uh, the next uh, 18 to 20 years, and equipment, the equipment expenditure uh, rising in proportion. The reason for showing this slide is simply to emphasise the fact that the deterrent and naval component of that budget uh, comprises 40% of the equipment plan, so approximately 20% of total defence expenditure, uh, and around half of that is on deterrent-related activity. What I want to speak about is how we direct and lead and control that national investment to best effect. So what is a nuclear submarine? This slide attempts to summarise somewhat inadequately, frankly, the, the nature of the uh, beast that is an integrated capability of a nuclear submarine carrying a nuclear weapon uh, to sea. First, there is the platform. A seven to 17,000 tonne steel tube containing a nuclear reactor, containing all the hotel services required to sustain the life of a crew varying between 95 and 150 people, depending on the type, uh, at uh, durations of autonomous operation of up to three months, at significant depth in oceans worldwide, in uh, water temperatures varying from the Arctic cold to uh, more tropical climates. Uh, at depth and in uh, remote locations, which ensure its principal characteristic, that of stealth. Importantly, we do not build prototype submarines in this country, and we take some time to make sure that the designs that we produce uh, operate as we expect them to by testing them extensively. We've just introduced the Astute class submarine into service, and we've undertaken three years of comprehensive testing for it to enter service. The follow-on submarines of that class are now entering service with a much shorter period of testing. Uh, 
Inside that submarine are significant uh, systems uh, for propulsion, for sustaining life, for ensuring the submarine can be controlled underwater, and controlling the weapons and the detection systems, not least the strategic uh, weapon system itself. itself. There are many subsystems below that level, each of them important to the survival of the submarine and the correct operation of the systems on board. An important uh, aspect of deterrence uh, that I feel is the accuracy with which a submarine is able to locate itself in the, in the world and therefore the accuracy with which it's able to uh, 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 fire its launch its uh, missiles and weapons to ensure that they uh, end up where they're meant to. We use, uh, on each evolution of the uh, submarine, we use extensive uh, new technologies to uh, continue to improve the stealth and economy of the submarine and the reliability of the submarine, and all those things are interconnected. We still don't provide much space uh, for people, and today, even, our, even in our latest submarines, we um, are what's called hot bunking. And for uh, those of you who don't know what that is, that's where, uh, when you get up, someone else gets into your bunk. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's not a particularly pleasant um, uh, aspect, but it's one you get used to. Uh, the main thing is that you don't share the bunk at the same time. So I just want to introduce this theme. Uh, to control that asset through life from the moment of its definition of the national requirement for it right the way through to its disposal. The government has responsibility for formulating the requirement, defining how far, how quiet, how powerful, what weapons, what sensors need to be on it, what do we want that equipment to do. We then move into uh, engaging with industry to develop the design and eventually contract for its procurement, and we will be contracting for the first of the UK's successor submarines in about two years' time. The specification of uh, the submarine at the point of contracting has to be thorough, uh, complete, to make sure that taxpayers' money isn't wasted and that the risk distribution between the demander, the government, and the supplier industry is well characterised and under control. And then the government must play a role in, of course, supporting that equipment. It is the owner of that submarine, and it must support the submarine and the weapon systems within it through life before eventually having to dispose of it. All of those uh, phases of the life of a submarine require a specific definition of what the Ministry of Defence, the government, is doing. And we call this, in general terms, the approving authority. And the approving authority takes the Secretary of State's responsibility for the ownership of that asset. It, it uh, includes many potentially hazardous energetic substances. There are a few situations in the world where we combine the um, proximity of missiles of that size and range, a nuclear warhead, a nuclear power plant, high energy, uh, fluid, gas um, uh, systems, uh, high power electrical systems, and people, and uh, cram all of that into a small space. Uh, we're not alone as a nation of doing that, of course, but it is a very exact discipline being in charge of the fleet and making sure that it remains safe throughout its operational life. And to do that, we need uh, skilled folk in the Ministry of Defence's employment to act as the owner and the approving uh, authority. The industry's role, particularly in what we call the Tier 1 suppliers, who build the ship, provide the propulsion system, and support uh, the submarine. Their role is to provide further information to us to enable us to make the important decisions about the life of that submarine through its life. We organize in the Ministry of Defense, I'm sorry for the wiring diagram, but I just want to give you a flavor of some of the uh, ways that we organize inside the Ministry of Defense. We are based, our technical teams are called multidisciplinary teams, where we bring together the engineers, the commercial uh, experts, the financial experts, the designers, and those with a particular contracting experience. And that multidisciplinary team uh, works with the platform through life as we 
uh, take that asset from the kernel of an idea through development into production and into in-service and eventually uh, disposal. So in terms of populating that uh, work, that role, that government role, it's very important that the government understands that it needs what I've called here a match fit, a, a, a fit for purpose organization. And in dealing with a high hazard uh, uh, asset, I'll call it that, a complex hazardous asset, is my summary of a, of a submarine. Hazardous because it contains that concentration of energy in what is essentially a challenging environment. You need to organize uh, well, you need to define the skills that you need in, uh, in government, and you need to create a baseline organization that is demonstrably good enough to do the job. Other people look at me to make sure that my organization is good enough and up for the job. So independent regulators review my organization, review the people inside that organization, and review the skills that those people bring to uh, my organization. We define the skills that they, that they must have, we define training needs, and we are engaged in continuous recruitment and retention activity. Where do we deploy those people? Well, they're deployed throughout that life cycle that I described on developing the requirement, on uh, working in the project teams that I've described. Some of them become regulators, checking that we're doing our job uh, properly. Others are right on the waterfront and day-to-day -day deployment on the platform, making sure that the day-to-day -day engineering on the uh, platforms and weapons uh, works well. And in some cases, we are interchanging with industry. So for me, an abiding challenge is making sure that we have enough people of the right caliber to execute this role. And no longer can we rely on the uh, uh, recruitment and retention uh, from 20, 30 years ago where the Cold War effort was the main effort, arguably, of this country. Uh, and uh, today we need to be in a steady state smaller submarine flotilla, uh, smaller uh, community that needs nonetheless to have the skills that its predecessor uh, organization did. That means we need to work very hard on making sure that we recruit the right people, we train them well. We need to create opportunities for people to join uh, through lateral entry schemes, uh, both into the Navy, into the organization that takes the submarines to sea, and into my own organization, the procurement organization. And throughout their careers, we intend to uh, provide, and we do provide, continuing professional development, and um, we tailor our um, HR programs, our reward and retention arrangements, to make sure that the professional CADA that looks after these responsibilities for the government is as stable as it possibly can. I think there are some uh, important future challenges uh, for the United Kingdom, and first and foremost is the national approach to creating a, a renewed civil service, and in particular a renewed technical civil service. The, we have probably outsourced as much as we can in this environment, leaving a core government role that I've tried to describe. And that core government role needs to be populated, as I've described, by folk who know what they're doing. And that really argues for the resurgence, the renewal of a commitment to a technical civil service cadre uh, that, is, that is capable of the job. My basic question, and I'll finish, because I'm, I think uh, uh, we might enjoy more questions is um, I've described a little of my role. I've described uh, how we go about um, codifying our submarines into systems of systems, and then how we go about managing those systems uh, through life, using experts in their field to control procurement activity uh, across the industrial base. Uh, it's a great pre a pleasure to have spoken with you today. I've only scratched the surface, but uh, in 15 or 20 minutes, I hope I've uh, given you enough food for thought and perhaps one or two questions. Thank you. Thank you.